Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Dr. Tapati's presentation. Myself, Dr. Tapati Vanjade. Today, topic of the presentation is factors affecting enzyme activity. Kindly stay with me till end of this video. Obviously, you will get to know a lot of new information from this video. Let's start the presentation. Already you know that contact between enzyme and substrate is the most essential prerequisite for enzyme activity because enzyme substrate complex formation is necessary for the action of enzyme. That means during uh, the conversion of substrate to product, ES complex formation is very essential during the enzyme catalyzed reaction. Enzyme activity and thus uh, the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction is partly regulated by certain environmental conditions, including the concentration of substrate, concentration of enzyme, temperature, pH, product concentration, time, presence of activators, cofactors, and coenzymes, presence of inhibitors, and light and radiation. Let's discuss about these factors affecting enzyme activity one by one. First of all, effect of concentration of substrate on enzyme activity. A simple chemical reaction with a single substrate shows a linear relationship between the rate of formation of product and the concentration of substrate. Whereas a typical enzyme catalyzed reaction involves two essential stages. First stage is an enzyme reversibly binds to the substrate resulting in the formation of, a, uh, of an enzyme substrate complex. Then an irreversible breakdown of the enzyme substrate complex to free enzyme and product. A rectangular hyperbola is obtained when velocity is plotted against the substrate concentration. Three distinct phases of the reaction are observed in the graph. First one is linear, second curve, and third one is almost unchanged. This type of relationship is observed in between initial velocity and substrate concentration when enzyme concentration, time, pH, temperature, and other factors remain constant. As I told you, three distinct phases are observed in the graph. In that case, first phase is linear because at low substrate concentrations, the rate of the reaction is proportional to substrate concentration. Increase in substrate concentration causes more and more enzyme molecules to bind with substrate molecules and hence velocity also increases. The rate of the reaction is said to be first order with respect to substrate. Whereas second phase is curved. At high substrate concentration, the velocity of enzyme activity ultimately reaches a maximum value which is known as the Vmax because finally a stage comes when all the enzyme molecules are fully occupied by the substrate molecules showing maximum velocity. Third phase is again linear because a further rise in substrate concentration naturally fails to increase the velocity anymore due to unavailability of free enzyme molecules. At Vmax, increase in substrate concentration does not cause any increase in velocity. Hence, it becomes a unimolecular reaction with an order of zero and the rate of the reaction becomes dependent on the ES complex not on the concentration of substrate. From this graph you can see that Km value or Michael is maintained constant value is equal to substrate concentration at half Vmax. The low value of Km indicates a strong affinity between the enzyme and substrate whereas a high value of Km shows weak affinity between the enzyme and substrate. Let's see effect of enzyme concentration on enzyme activity. 
when substrate concentration, time, pH, temperature, and all other factors remain constant, at that time an increase in enzyme concentration will increase the reaction rate until it reaches a certain point, after which it will remain constant because the number of active sites available increases as the enzyme concentration rises. Fair is the reaction may no longer increase once all the substrates have been bound to the active site of the enzyme as there will be no substrate left for the new enzyme to bind because substrate concentration is constant at that condition. The velocity of an enzyme catalyzed reaction increases with increase in temperature up to a maximum and then declines. A bell shaped curve is usually observed, which is shown in this figure. Increase in temperature results in higher activation energy of the molecules and more molecular collision or more enzyme and substrate interaction for the reaction to proceed faster. The optimum temperature for most of the enzymes is between 35 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Majority of the enzymes become inactive at a higher temperature, mostly above 70 degrees Celsius, due to the denaturation, which leads to de-arrangement uh, in the native structure of the protein, therefore distortion of the active site. How a few enzymes are active at high temperature. They can resist high temperatures typically between 45 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius. Those are known as thermostable enzymes. Enzyme thermostability is an intrinsic property determined by the primary structure of the protein. However, external environmental factors including cations, substrates, coenzymes, modulators, polyols and proteins often increase enzyme thermostability. Whereas, few enzymes are even active at very less temperature like 4 degrees Celsius. Those are known as psychrophilic enzymes. Psychrophilic enzymes maintain high activity at low temperatures mainly by decreasing the temperature dependence of the reaction that is catalyzed. This is achieved by improving the mobility or flexibility of the active site of the enzyme. Increase in hydrogen ion concentration considerably influences the enzyme activity and a bell-shaped curve is uh, normally obtained. Each enzyme has an optimum pH at which the velocity is maximum. Below and uh, above this pH, the enzyme activity is much lower and at extreme pH, the enzyme becomes totally inactive. Hydrogen ions influence the enzyme activity by altering the ionic charges on the amino acids, particularly amino acids present at the active site, substrates, enzyme substrate complex, etc. Most of the enzymes of higher organisms show optimum activity around neutral pH, that means uh, in between pH 6 and uh, 8. However, there are many exceptions. Few enzymes are acid uh, stable, that means maximum activity you can find at acidic range, uh, including pepsin, which is active in between pH 1 and 2. Acid phosphatase, optimum pH is in between 4 to 5. Enzymes from fungi and plants are mostly active in acidic pH in between 4 to 6, whereas there are few enzymes which are most active in alkaline condition. Uh, examples are alkaline phosphatase, which is active in between 10 to 11 pH, uh, and another example is arginase enzyme. The accumulation of reaction products generally decreases the enzyme velocity. For certain enzymes, the products combine with the active site of enzyme and form a loose complex and thus inhibit the enzyme activity. In the living system, this type of inhibition is generally prevented by a quick removal of products. Already I have discussed about the in product inhibition by feedback mechanism uh, in a separate video. You should watch that. Feedback inhibition is a cellular control mechanism. The process of inhibiting the first step by the final product in a series of enzyme catalyzed reactions of a metabolic pathway is known as the negative feedback regulation.
in this uh, series of enzyme catalytic reaction you can see that a is the uh, first uh, substrate b and c these are uh, intermediate uh, products whereas d is the final product d is binding with enzyme 1 at the allosteric site for inhibitor due to binding of uh, this d at the inhibitor site structure of the active site is uh, distorted therefore substrate a cannot bind at the active site of enzyme enzyme one therefore this metabolic pathway is inhibited that means in this process the end product is inhibiting the metabolic pathway if you observe this enzyme activity versus time curve, you will find that initially the enzyme activity increases with the time, then remains constant and finally drops when all the other factors including substrate concentration, enzyme concentration, pH, temperature, etc. remain constant. The longer an enzyme is incubated with its substrate, the greater the amount of product that will be formed. Therefore, you will see increase in enzyme activity. However, the rate of the formation of product is not a simple linear function of the time of incubation. Because when all the substrates are used up or all the enzyme molecules are saturated or when equilibrium is raised, the enzyme activity remains constant. With very long incubation period, enzyme denaturation occurs, so activity decreases. Product accumulation is also another reason behind loss of enzyme activity after a long incubation period. As a general rule, the incubation should be long enough to permit a moderate amount of product to be formed and long enough that the error in timing is insignificant but not so long that there is detectable leveling off of the cuff. That means you have to optimize the reaction time in order to get maximum enzyme activity. Certain inorganic metallic cations like calcium, magnesium, manganese, zinc, cobalt, copper, sodium, potassium, iron, etc. activate enzyme. Hence, in presence of uh, one of these metal ions, enzyme activity increases. Whereas there are very few anions which are acting as the enzyme activator. One example is chloride ion, which is required for amylase activity. Metal ions act as activators of enzymes through various mechanisms, including combining with the substrate, formation of ES metal complex direct participation in the reaction and uh, bringing a conformational change in the enzyme. There are two categories of enzymes which require metals for their activity. One category is metal activated enzymes, another one is metalloenzymes. In case of metal activated enzymes, the metal is not tightly held by the enzyme and can be exchanged easily with other ions. Whereas metalloenzymes hold the met uh, metals rather tightly which are not readily exchanged. Examples of metal activated enzymes are ATPase, uh, which is activated by magnesium ion and calcium ion. Enolase is activated by magnesium ion. Examples of metal enzymes are alcohol dehydrogenase, carbonic anhydrase, alkaline phosphatase, carboxypeptidase, and aldolase. Uh, they contain zinc. Phenol oxidase contains copper. Pyruvate oxidase contains manganese, xanthine oxidase contains molybdenum, cytochrome oxidase contains iron and copper. So in that case, metal ions uh, present, uh, metal ions which are activating uh, metal activated enzymes known as the activators, whereas uh, metal ions which are present in the metal enzymes known as the cofactors. In unit 3, already I have mentioned that although some enzymes are solely protein like pepsin and trypsin, few enzymes need some help from non-protein component. Without binding with non-protein part, they cannot carry out the reaction, so they are inactive. Non-protein component of the enzyme is known as the cofactor. Cofactor may be an inorganic compound like uh, these metal ions. Whereas uh, few may be loosely bound, loosely and temporarily bound, which are known as the coenzymes, and 
few tightly bound organic molecules, tightly bound organic molecules which are known as the prosthetic group. Most of the coenzymes are derivatives of vitamin B complex. You should watch, you need three for the complete understanding of coenzymes. Enzyme activity is also affected by inhibitors. Enzyme regulation is a careful control system of enzymes in which some enzymes are turned on while others are turned off. Enzymes need to be tightly regulated to ensure that levels of the product do not rise to undesired levels. This is accomplished by enzyme inhibition by different inhibitors. Enzyme activities are inhibited by reversible, irreversible and allosteric manner. Already I have discussed about all details of enzyme inhibition processes from unit 24 to 29. You should watch those videos. Enzyme inhibitor is an inorganic or organic substance which binds with enzyme, influences the binding of substrate, influences enzyme's turnover number and reduces enzyme activity. The process in which enzyme activity is reduced by any substance or chemical is known as the enzyme inhibition. 20 amino acids from which all the proteins of all organisms are built do not absorb UVA or visible radiation. Only tryptophan, tyrosine and to a lesser extent phenylalanine absorb UVB light. This being responsible for the characteristic light absorbance by proteins at wavelengths between 270 to 280 nanometer. Exposure of enzymes to ultraviolet, beta, gamma and X-rays uh, inactivates uh, certain enzymes due to the formation of peroxides. As for example, UV rays inhibit salivary alpha amylase activity. A limited number of enzymes require visible light for their, uh, their catalytic activity as uh, is the case of those participating in photosynthesis or DNA repair enzymes, DNA photolyases. Enzymes that are constituted exclusively by amino acids and no other chemical groups are not affected by visible light irradiation both in their catalytic activity and their structure. Nevertheless, it is possible that this type of radiation could modify conjugated enzymes whose prosthetic groups absorb visible light. Riboflavin is present in all Arabic cells and is a very efficient photosensitizer presenting a complex photochemistry. Visible light irradiation in the presence of riboflavin diminishes the enzymatic activity of horseradis uh, peroxidase enzyme only when this glycoenzyme was deglycosylated. Whereas uh, the activity of catalase and uh, lysozyme are inactivated by singlet oxygen, which is generated by the action of visible light in presence of photosensitizer. This is the riboflavin. Thank you very much for watching this video. Kindly like, share and subscribe this channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get notification.